Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS. Let's take up the daily quiz for today. The first question, which of the following statements are correct? Council of Scientific and Industrial Research or CSIR was established post-independence as an autonomous body. Arkot Ramaswamy Mudaliar played an instrumental role in the creation of CSIR. It functions under the Ministry of Education. Prime Minister acts as the ex officio president of CSIR. Amongst the given statements, the first and the third statements are incorrect. So option B is the right answer. See, the CSIR is the country's premier research and development organization and it was established back in 1942 by the British government. In its establishment, Arkot Ramaswamy Mudaliar played a key role, who was then one of the members of the Viceroy's Executive Council. He, along with Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar, would establish CSIR as India's premier research and development organization, and Shanti Swarup Bhatnagar also became the first director general of the organization. Today, the CSIR represents the largest R&D organization in the country, and it functions across multiple sectors, including aerospace, particle physics, petroleum, metallurgy, life sciences, environmental science, etc. This institution functions under the Ministry of Science and Technology, and the Prime Minister acts as the ex officio president of the organization, whereas the Science and Tech Minister acts as the vice president, and the functioning of the institution is managed by its governing body, which is headed by the Director General of CSIR. This question was taken up because according to this press release from the PIB, the CSIR has briefed the Vice President about the various activities that have been undertaken by the labs of CSIR. The Director General of CSIR has informed the Vice President of India that the institution has developed an air surveillance system to detect COVID-19 and he has suggested the installation of the system at the parliament. Now let's look at the second question. India collaborates with which country under the Partnership to Advance Clean Energy Research or PACE-R? Is it Israel, France, United States or Germany? The correct answer is option C, the United States. See, India and the United States, they share a strategic energy partnership and under this initiative, they collaborate in the development of clean and renewable forms of energy. For this purpose, they have set up a joint partnership known as PACE-R, which stands for Partnership to Advance Clean Energy Research. This topic was taken up because according to this press release from the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas, India's Petroleum Minister has assured the US Secretary of Energy that the India-US Strategic Energy Partnership will be revamped. Under the PACE-R partnership, both the countries collaborate and take up joint research and development to develop clean and green technologies such as biofuels, hydrogen production, carbon sequestration, etc. And through this partnership, both the countries are working together to develop cleaner sources of energy in order to reduce their carbon footprint. Now let's look at the third question. What best describes the term deep tech? Technology that is embedded in day-to-day -day applications, Technology that is based on tangible engineering innovation or scientific advances that provide solutions to substantial scientific or engineering challenges. Technology that brings together artificial intelligence, robotics, automation, space engineering and cybersecurity. Or technology that is inaccessible and unaffordable to the weaker sections. The correct answer is option B. Deep tech or deep technology provides for tangible engineering innovation or scientific advances that provide solutions to any substantial scientific or engineering challenges. This would be the most apt definition of deep tech. See, deep tech is a type of classification of technology-based organizations, especially startups, and it refers to those companies and institutions which are providing technology-based solutions for substantial scientific or engineering challenges. The products of deep tech is said to have a deep and profound impact on various segments, including AI, robotics, smart homes and smart cities, life sciences and medical devices, clean energy, energy efficiency, etc. Deep tech organizations set themselves apart from regular scientific organizations by exclusively focusing on research and development 
even though it requires large capital investment even before the products are commercialized this is what sets deep tech companies and organizations apart from regular technology based organizations because their innovations are going to have a deep and profound impact and it can catalyze change in the entire sector or industry so such paradigm altering technologies are developed under deep tech but this domain comes associated with a lot of risk because initially the focus is entirely on r&d and it requires very large capital investments without any scope of commercialization in the initial days this is the primary risk that is associated with the deep tech industry but once the product is fine tuned then it can have a deep impact on the society and the industry and it even generates valuable intellectual property for the founders these are the companies which develop fundamental defining technologies and this is what distinguishes them from the regular tech based companies the innovations and products that come out of the deep tech industry can have a wide sweeping impact on the entire industry and it can have a huge spillover effect on several diverse applications this topic was taken up because according to this press release from the ministry of science and technology a women led startup known as astrom has developed a deep tech solution for providing reliable low cost internet services to rural areas this deep tech startup was incubated at the indian institute of science bangalore with financial support from the department of science and technology this deep tech startup has developed a wireless product known as giga mesh which will enable the telecom operators to deploy high quality high speed and low cost telecom infrastructure in the rural areas and this innovation has been projected to bring down the cost of operating telecom infrastructure in remote rural areas by at least 5 times now let's look at the fourth question varuna is a joint naval exercise between india and france option b is the right answer this question has been asked because according to this press release from the ministry of defense a french naval delegation has visited india to discuss the growing maritime cooperation and the need for enhanced interoperability between the two forces especially in the indian ocean region see india and france share a very close defense and strategic relationship and from the 1980s itself they started holding a bilateral naval exercise this was later renamed as the varuna naval exercise next month that is in april 2021 the two navies will be holding the varuna exercise and it reflects the growing maritime security ties between india and france the defense relations between india and france is so deep rooted that back in 98 when india carried out the pokhara nuclear test france was one amongst the few countries which did not criticize india's nuclear tests and along with russia and israel france supported india's nuclear tests as it understood india's strategic requirements france has also been a key defense supplier to india and india has procured key defense platforms from france such as the mirage fighter jets the rafale fighter jets scorpion submarine technology and france is also collaborating with india on its ambitious p75 and p75i submarine projects then in the indian ocean france is also a key player because france has a lot of interest in the indian ocean region especially its overseas territory that is the french reunion so this enables france to have a strong diplomatic and military presence in the indian ocean and it is also a member of the indian ocean commission which is a key regional grouping of the western part of the indian ocean recently india became an observer to the indian ocean commission and this further strengthens the maritime cooperation between india and france that is focused on the indo pacific region then at the indian ocean region information fusion center that has been set up by the indian navy france has deployed a liaison officer because at this center located on the outskirts of delhi the indian navy integrates all the radar data from its coastal surveillance radar project which provides for a real time picture about the movement of ships across the entire stretch of the indian ocean under this project india has set up a series of coastal surveillance radars along its coastline and as well as along its island territories and india has even extended this project to friendly countries in the indian ocean such as mauritius seychelles 
and it is further looking to expand this project to cover Maldives and Sri Lanka as well. And it is being reported that for the upcoming edition of the Varuna exercise, the Quad countries might also be invited. And most likely it's possible that for the first time, India and France will hold a joint exercise with the other Quad members, that is US, Japan and Australia. Now let's look at the fifth question. Which of the following statements are correct? A uniform civil code is one that would provide for one law for the entire country applicable to all religious communities in their personal matters such as marriage, divorce, inheritance, adoption, etc. Article 44 of the constitution lays down that the state shall endeavor to secure a uniform civil code for the citizens throughout the territory of India. Article 44 is one of the directive principles of state policy and hence is not justiciable but the principles laid down therein are fundamental in governance. All the three statements are correct. Option D is the right answer. See, Uniform Civil Code is considered to be an egalitarian objective of the Indian Constitution and it is contained under Article 44 of the Directive Principles of State Policy. Unlike fundamental rights, which are justiciable, which can be enforced by courts, DPSPs cannot be enforced by courts and hence they are not justiciable. But however, they lay down the principles that are essential and fundamental in governance. If a uniform civil code is brought in, it will provide for a uniform single law for all religious communities to deal with personal matters such as marriage, divorce, inheritance, adoption, etc. This topic was taken up because according to this article in the Indian Express, the Chief Justice of India has praised the uniform civil code that has been implemented in Goa. Now let's look at a question from the 2017 prelims paper. Consider the following pairs. On the left, we have a set of cultural traditions and on the right, we have the corresponding states. We need to check whether they are correctly matched. First, the Chapchar Kut festival has been matched with Mizoram. Then we have the Konjum Parba ballad matched with Manipur and the Tangta dance with Sikkim. The correct answer is option B, 1 and 2 only. Only the first and the second have been correctly matched. The third match is incorrect because the Tangta dance is not from Sikkim. Instead, it's from Manipur. Now for the fact of the day discussion, let's talk about asteroid Apophis. This asteroid that has been depicted in this image over here was discovered back in 2004 and it has been named after the ancient Egyptian god of chaos and darkness. Because when the asteroid was discovered, NASA had initially predicted that this asteroid has one of the highest possibilities to strike Earth. Asteroid 99942 Apophis is basically a near-Earth asteroid that measures around 370 meters in diameter. And when it was discovered in 2004, it initially caused a lot of concern around the world. Because initial observations of its orbit indicated that it had a strike probability of 2.7%. And it was predicted that on the 13th of April 2029, this asteroid had the highest possibility of striking Earth. This led NASA to list the asteroid as one of the most hazardous asteroids that could impact Earth. See, in this animation, you can see the predicted path of asteroid Apophis. And it was considered to have the highest probability to strike Earth on the 13th of April 2029. Then further predictions also revealed that if it misses striking Earth in 2029, it could possibly hit Earth again in 2036 or maybe in 2068. So considering this possible risk from this asteroid, a lot of studies were focused on the asteroid and its possible path. And recently there has been a major breakthrough because NASA's near-Earth object studies has confirmed that asteroid Apophis is unlikely to hit Earth at least for the next 100 years. According to latest estimates and calculations, its strike probability in all the three years has gone down significantly, thereby eliminating it as a risk for Earth. Recently, when the asteroid passed quite close to Earth, astronomers studied its orbit using radar data. And through these accurate observations, they have accurately predicted its path. And even though this asteroid is going to come quite close to Earth in 2029, it's unlikely to strike Earth. These calculations have also revealed 
that even in 2036 and 2068, its probability to strike Earth has gone down significantly. And in fact, on the 13th of April 2029, those in the Eastern Hemisphere will get a great opportunity to witness this asteroid pass close to Earth. And researchers and astronomers are looking forward to this event to study the asteroid closely. So with this, let's conclude our discussion for today. Thanks for watching.